In the last lecture, we have understood how to find the HCF using for loop. We learned this concept already in the last lecture. Now, in this presentation, we will understand special program number 16, finding HCF using Euclidean algorithm. So, without any further delay, let's get started. The topic of this presentation is special program finding HCF using Euclidean algorithm. Now, as we know the topic, let's move on and let's understand the problem statement before writing the program. So, let's look at the problem statement first. Write a program to find the HCF of two numbers using Euclidean algorithm. Now, you might be wondering what exactly this Euclidean algorithm is. We will now understand what is the meaning of Euclidean algorithm and what this algorithm is capable of. This algorithm is very old algorithm to find the HCF of two numbers. And it is a very popular algorithm as well. We will use this algorithm which is proposed by Euclid and we will try to find the HCF of two numbers using this algorithm. Eventually, we will turn that into a program. So now, let's move ahead and let's understand the Euclidean algorithm. So what are the steps involved in the Euclidean algorithm? The step number one is divide the greater number by smaller number and take the remainder. So this is step number one. We need to divide the greater number by smaller number. If let's say we have 12 and 15 and we need to find the HCF of these two numbers, then we need to divide the greater number by smaller number if we are interested in finding the HCF, this is according to step number 1 of the Euclidean algorithm. Greater number is 15 and smaller number is 12. So, we need to divide 15 by 12. That's what we need to do. And eventually, we need to take the remainder. We are interested in remainder and not in the quotient. Step number 2 is to divide the smaller number by the remainder. So, step number 2 says that we need to divide the smaller number by the remainder that we have obtained in step number 1. After this, we just need to repeat until remainder is 0. So, there are a total of 3 steps which we need to follow in the Euclidean algorithm to find the HCF of two numbers. Now, in order to see this in action, let's take one simple example. We are interested in finding the HCF of 15 and 12 and for this purpose, First, we need to divide 15 by 12. This is according to step number 1. And then we need to take the remainder. Let's do this right now. Let's divide 15 by 12. 15 must be our dividend and 12 must be the divisor. 12 ones are 12 and we will get 3 as the remainder. So, the quotient is 1 and the remainder is 3. We are interested in the remainder. In step number 1, we need to divide the greater number by smaller number and we need to take the remainder. We are interested in remainder. Now, in step number 2, we need to divide the smaller number by the remainder. Now, out of these two numbers, which one is smaller? It is 12. Now, we need to divide 12 by 3. That is what this step is saying. We need to divide the smaller number by the remainder. So, let's do this now. This time, we need to divide 12 by 3. We know that 12 is completely divisible by 3 because 3 is the factor of 12. 3 fours are 12, that's what we can say. And what we are getting here is 0 as the remainder. According to step number 3, we need to repeat this step until remainder becomes 0. Here, remainder becomes 0, therefore we need to stop. And the HCF is 3. This is the Euclidean algorithm. So, we can say this that HCF of 12 and 15 is 3. This is the highest common factor of 12 and 15. I hope the algorithm is completely clear. So, after getting the remainder as 0, we need to take this number and this number over here is the HCF of 12 and 15. So, this is all that we need to understand about the Euclidean algorithm. Now, we are ready to write the program to find the HCF of two numbers using Euclidean algorithm. 
So now let's write the program. First, we need to ask the user to enter the two numbers. We will first ask the user to enter the first number. With the help of input method, we can do this. To this input method, we have passed enter the first number as the string. We know that this will be displayed as the prompt and user will provide the first number accordingly. We will store that number in num1 variable. After this, we will ask the user to enter the second number and we will store that in num2. Now, let's say that we want to divide num1 by num2. It can be num2 by num1, but let's say that we want to divide the first number by the second number. For this, we must remember that we always need to divide the greater number by the smaller number. Like in this case, we are dividing 15 by 12. Therefore, num1 must be equal to 15 and num2 must be equal to 12. Let's say these numbers are provided by the user. In that case, num1 must be 15 and num2 must be 12. Let's say that the user has provided the first number as 12 and second number as 15. In that case, what we need to do? We need to check this. If num1 is less than num2, if at all it is the case that num1 is less than num2, then we will swap num1 and num2. This means that we will make num1 equal to num2 and num2 equal to num1. What is happening here in this line? We are performing tuple unpacking here. Now, what do we mean by tuple unpacking? By writing this line, we are making this a tuple. Whatever the variables we have on the right hand side, they will be represented in a tuple. So, a tuple is created and the values of these variables will be stored in that tuple. After this, the tuple is unpacked. This means the values of these variables will be assigned to these variables on the left hand side respectively. The value of num2 will be assigned to num1 and the value of num1 will be assigned to num2. So, if it is the case that num1 is equal to 12 and num2 is equal to 15, after performing this step, we will get num1 equal to 15 and num2 equal to 12. And that is what we want. We want that num1 must be greater than num2. I hope up to this point, the program is clear. So here we are performing swapping and this means that we are making num1 equal to num2 and num2 equal to num1. Now after this, the next step is to perform the main operation. That is, we now need to find the HCF of two numbers using Euclidean algorithm. How to do this? We need to perform successive division and we can do that with the help of while loop. If you observe carefully, we need to divide 15 by 12 and eventually we will get the remainder. We need to take this remainder and in the next step, we need to make this the divisor. This means that this must be the new num2 and num1 must be equal to the previous num2. This is num2 in the previous step. Now this must become num1 in the next step. In the next division, this must be the num1 and the remainder must be the num2. So, for this purpose, we need this while loop with this while statement. While num2 not equal to 0. And then we need to continue and write this line. Num1, comma num2 equal to num2, comma num1 mod num2. Understand what is happening here. First, we are checking this. Is num2 equal to 0? Why are we checking this? We know that these are the values of num2. They are num2. If num2 becomes 0, then we need to stop at that point. Hence, we are using this condition. If num2 is equal to 0, then we will move outside of this while loop. This means that at that point in time, while loop is terminated. Now, within this while loop, we have this line. num1, comma num2 equal to num2, comma num1 mod num2. The same thing will happen here. Tuple unpacking. First, the tuple is created. The values of num2 and num1 mod num2 will be stored in that tuple. And eventually, tuple unpacking happens. This means that the value of num2 will be assigned to num1 
and the value of num1 mod num2 will be assigned to num2. This is what we want. We want this that in the next step, num1 must be equal to num2. That is what we are doing here. We are making num1 equal to num2. This was num2. Now it becomes num1. That's what we are doing. And we are also making num2 equal to num1 mod num2. This must be the new num2, which is num1 mod num2 from the previous step. And that's what we want. After the execution of this while loop, we will get our HCF. Understand this, that at this point, we know that num1 is equal to 12 and num2 is equal to 3. Now we know that num2 is not equal to 0, so we will go inside. Now, according to this line, we need to make num1 equal to num2. This means that num1 is now 3 and num2 must be equal to num1 mod num2. What is num1 mod num2? At this point, this is equal to 0. This means that num2 becomes 0 and num1 is equal to 3. Now after this, we will check this condition. Is num2 equal to 0? Yes, num2 is equal to 0. Therefore, we need to stop. Hence, we know that we need to print the value of num1 because num1 is equal to 3 and hence this must be the HCF. Therefore, in the print statement, we will use the value of num1 to print the HCF. So here we are writing this statement. The HCF is num1. I hope this idea is clear. By the end of this while loop, we are sure that we will get our HCF according to the Euclidean algorithm. Now, let's execute this code line by line and let's understand this entire piece of code very properly. So here comes the first line. Num1 equal to int input, enter the first number. We know this, that this will be displayed as the prompt to the user. User will provide the value. Let's say the user has provided the first number, which is equal to 12. After this, we know that num1 must point to this object with value 12. Now we need to execute this line. Num2 equal to int input, enter the second number. This time, enter the second number will be displayed. Let's say the user has provided this value 15. So num2 must be equal to 15 at this point. Now what is the next step? We need to check this. Is it the case that num1 is less than num2? We need to divide num1 by num2. And the requirement is that the num1 must be greater than num2. Therefore, we need to check this. Is it the case that num1 is less than num2? Is num1 less than num2? Yes, 12 is less than 15. Therefore, we need to continue and execute this line. After execution, we know that 15 will be stored here and 12 will be stored here. So, we will get 15 here and 12 here. This is called swapping. So, num1 is 15 and num2 is 12 at this point. Now, let's execute this line while num2 not equal to 0. We know that num2 is 12, num2 is not equal to 0. Therefore, we will continue and execute this line. After execution of this line, we know that num1 will hold the value of num2. This means that num1 will hold 12 and num2 will hold num1 mod num2. What is num1 mod num2? Num1 mod num2 must be equal to 3 because after dividing 15 by 12, we will get 3 as the remainder. Therefore, num2 must be equal to 3 at this point and num1 must be equal to 12. So, let's store 12 here and 3 here. Now, we need to execute this line. We know that num2 is still not equal to 0. Therefore, we will continue and execute this line. At this point, we know that num1 must be equal to 3. As according to this statement, num1 must be equal to num2. This means that num1 must hold the value of num2 which is 3. And num2 must be equal to num1 mod num2. This means that num2 will now hold value 0 because 3 completely divides 12. And hence we will get remainder 0. Therefore, num1 must be equal to 3 and num2 must be equal to 0. Now at this point, num2 is equal to 0. Therefore, this condition is not satisfied. This becomes false. Hence, we need to terminate this loop at this point. And this means that we will go outside this while loop 
and now we need to execute this print statement after execution we will get this output the hcf is 3 because num1 is 3 i hope this idea is completely clear in this way we are getting the hcf of two numbers that two using euclidean algorithm and this is the complete program to find the hcf using euclidean algorithm now we are ready to execute this code in Visual Studio Code to verify the results. So let's open our Visual Studio Code now. I have opened this folder Python work in my Visual Studio Code and within this folder I have created this file hcf using euclidean.py. Within this file I have written the same code. Now we are ready to execute this code. For this purpose we need to open the new terminal. And we need to type this command python, then white space, then name of this file followed by .py extension. So let's do this now. Now let's hit enter. Let's enter the first number. Let's say it is 12. And let's say the second number is 15. If we hit enter, we will get this message that is the HCF is 3. Now let's execute this command once again. This time let's provide different values. Let's say 78 and 96. We are getting this output. The HCF is 6. HCF of these two numbers is 6. In this way, we can continue to provide the values and we will get the HCF accordingly. So with this, we can say that our code is working correctly. So let's get back to our presentation. So, we have understood how to write the program to find the HCF using Euclidean algorithm. With this, we can say that we are done with this topic that is special program finding HCF using Euclidean algorithm. And not only we are done with this lecture, we have also completed the entire chapter on special programs. This entire chapter is now finished and now we will move to the next chapter which is on functions. So with this, I hope the chapter is completely clear and you have gained enough knowledge about different programs and how to write those programs. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.